it's time to go through all of the exact differential equation questions we've had in the past, uh, you know how it goes, three years of finals. Turns out there are only three of these. Two that I had marked as exact equations um, are definitely not, uh, although they, they could be in some way, but right now, sitting here, about to take midterm two tonight, I, uh, I, I am not doing these two. So we're doing the real, the real exact ones, or the obvious exact ones, uh, starting with question five. If the following uh, differential equation is exact, let's select the implicit solution to this initial value problem. So we know that if an equation, uh, if a differential equation in this form is exact, uh, this term right here, anything that's not multiplied by a y prime, uh, we will call, uh, which one is it? We will call this m, and over here this is n. And we can test whether a differential equation is exact by seeing if my is equal to nx. Um, the idiotic way that I remember this with uh, the little, um, you know, memory device is that uh, there's a <laughs> there's a, a CAD package called nx. Um, <laughs> that's it. That's, there's nothing else to it. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna use that. Now the partial derivative of m with respect to y will be e to the x cosine y and then minus 2 sine y and we're checking if that's equal to if that's equal to nx so the partial derivative of n with respect to x that's e to the x cosine y minus 2 minus 2 sine this is an x by the way sine x sine x and then this 2y uh, will become 0 because we're treating it as a constant. So because this is true, this is true, our equation is exact and we can find, uh, we can find our solution by uh, taking the integral of m with respect to x and comparing it with the integral of n with respect to y. So this first uh, integral here, m dx will give us e to the x sine y plus 2y cosine x. And we're comparing that against uh, this second integral, which gives us e to the x sine y. We see overlap between those two terms. That's good. Uh, and then this 2 cosine x will become 2y cosine x. And then we get plus y squared. We see overlap here and here. Remember, when any uh, terms are overlapping, we only count them once. So I'll get rid of this and start writing out uh, our solution. So we're only counting our underlying term terms once. We have e to the x sine y plus 2y cosine x plus the y squared that only shows up in this term. Because remember what uh, m and n really are, uh, they're the partial derivatives of some larger equation, the equation that we're finding right here. Uh, and if you take the partial derivative of this with respect to x, you get m. And if you take the partial derivative of this with respect to y, you'll get n. And you can uh, work through it if you want to prove that to yourself. And all of this is equal to uh, the, the constant term that um, we'll get from those integrations. We're told that y at 0 is equal to pi. So we can uh, solve for c that way. Uh, x is 0, uh, y is pi. So this term will go to 0 uh, because sine of pi is 0. Cosine of pi is negative, sorry, cosine of 0 is 1 times 2 pi is 2 pi, and this is pi squared. So our c is equal to 2 pi plus pi squared. And that, uh, that is that for that. 
Question six, we're looking for another implicit solution to this initial value problem. It's looking, uh, looking very similar over here uh, in, in what they're giving us, but we still have to check if m and n, if those are m and n, if m y is equal to n x. <laughs> okay, so uh, m y will give us uh, negative e to the x cosine y. I'm oh, sorry, this is, a, this is a partial derivative, not a not an integral. Um, so cosine y uh, minus 2 cosine x plus 0, that x squared will go to 0, and we're seeing if that's equal to uh, e to the x cosine y minus 2 minus 2 cosine x. So this is true. This is true. I'll just shrink it up here. Uh, and so as a result, we can we can just uh, find the integral of m dx and compare it with the integral of n and dy. Let's make sure that that was uh, yeah, that is what we were doing up here. So m dx will give us e to the x sine y plus 2y sine x plus x cubed over 3. And then uh, n dy, here's our little comparison, will give us e to the x sine y uh, Let's see. Oh, I'm 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 apparently pretty bad at these integrals. Uh, that's a that should be a negative. The integral of negative cosine is sine. Sorry, is negative sine. There's, see, there's my problem. Uh, so this will give us negative two y sine x and e to the y. So we have overlap in these terms. Our solution, you know, just taking one of each of those overlapping terms and then both of our unique terms, we get x cubed over 3 plus e to the y plus e to the x sine y minus 2y sine x is equal to c. And we can solve this uh, using y at 0 is equal to 0. Uh, solving that, we get this term becomes 0, this term becomes 1, this term uh, becomes 0 and this term also becomes zero. So we are left with C is equal to one. So we're looking for our x cubed over three. Yep, yep, that looks good. D is our correct answer. And seven, we are finding a solution to this initial value problem. Uh, we're, in the, we're in polynomial land right now, which is a lot easier to, easier to deal with. So here is our m, here is our n. If m y is equal to n x, then we are exact. m y is 6 x plus 2 y, and we're seeing if that's equal to 6 x, what do you know, plus 2 y. So that's great. Uh, we can now take the integral of m dx. That will be 3x squared, 3x squared y plus xy squared, and let's compare that against, let's compare that against 3x squared y plus xy squared plus y squared, and I should be clear, this is a comparison with this and n dy. And so here are our overlapping terms. We can write our solution as 3x squared y plus xy squared plus the unique uh, y squared we had hanging out over here. This is equal to c. Solving for c, uh, we're solving y at 1 equals 3. Um, so we will get 9 here, uh, another 9 here, and another 9 here. So c is 27. Hopefully this was a, a helpful little review for exact equations.